Hey, I'm Steve, also known as Terramantis, and in this video we're going to talk about 10 things that you may or may not know about Monster Hunter World. We'll go over topics that are based in lore, game mechanics, secrets, easter eggs, and things that are simply fun to know. But all these Monster Hunter World topics are either obscure or widely unknown, and the topics will get more difficult as we go. So remember to play the game where if you learn something new you hit the like button, but if you already knew everything, don't feel bad to also hit the like button. Alright, let's get into it. Here's 10 things that you don't know about Monster Hunter World. Let's start with something easy. Well, easy yet still something that was able to evade my complete understanding for nearly 600 hours of playing Monster Hunter World. And that thing is exactly how to trigger the sand pit of Zone 8 in the Wildspire Waste. And really, it's simple. You need two things. One, Diablo must be available on your Wildspire Waste map. And two, if Diablos is there, then all you need to do is make some noise while up top by the pit. You can do this by shooting a slinger projectile at one of the Noyos. When shot, the Noyos will scream, calling attention to the Diablos who will then burrow up through the sand pit to investigate, causing it to collapse in the process. The next one is less of something I think a lot of people won't know and more of a public service announcement. And that thing is that once Poogie loves you and can dig up items for you in Astera as we discussed in our previous 10 things video, if you bring Poog next to the companion hunter by the canteen, every other outing or so Poogie will dig up a meal voucher. And if you don't know, when using a meal voucher to order your meal, you're guaranteed to get all the food skills regardless of the fresh ingredients in that meal. So it's pretty awesome. Alright, now speaking of food skills, one thing that you might not know is that sometimes, in addition to the normal skills food can provide, there are also daily palico food skills as well. These cycle in threes per day, and there are many of them ranging from things like feline fisher, which increases the likelihood of fish biting while fishing, feline temper, which increases bow gun damage but also deviation, and many other daily food skills. Well, one that I'm willing to bet that you may have missed or don't exactly understand how it works is called Cool Cat. And what this skill does is that it actually gives you a damage buff for a short time after using the sit gesture. Not exactly useful by any means, but it's still pretty obscure. Alright, the next one is simply a quick little aspect that you may not have noticed about the ghillie mantle. And what you may not know is that as long as you're standing completely still, the ghillie mantle will last forever. That's it. As long as you're not moving, it lasts as long as you stay still. For the next one, as I'm sure any Monster Hunter veteran can attest, the addition of the sliding mechanic to inclines on the map is a godsend to world. Not only is it extremely fun to perform, but sliding also adds an aspect to combat and provides slight breaks in the tedium of on-foot pursuits. Well, there's actually a small feature of the game that I didn't notice until I accidentally stumbled upon it after many, many hours of play. One thing that you may not know is that if you run out of stamina while reaching the edge of a slidable incline, your exhaustion will take over, and instead of sliding down the hill you will hilariously tumble down to the bottom. The next one has to do with the intricacies of some gestures, and I'm willing to bet that you may not know this because, well, why would you even try this? But anyway, the thing that you might not know is that some gestures can actually damage monsters, like Dante's guns. The Shuri can throw. Or the Sumo Slap. Alright, for the next one, let's discuss one of the most difficult monsters to damage. Lavasioth. As I'm sure you're all very well aware, Levasioth is a magma-coated Pising fish beast, and when this fish is out of its water, also known as lava in this case, well, its liquid magma skin will begin to cool and then harden into rock, causing many weapons to bounce off and deflect constantly. Well, one thing that you might not know is that if you use torch shot slinger ammo to shoot Levasioth, you can actually heat up its hardened skin, making it softer and easier to damage once again. Alright, for the next one, let's talk about Lunastra, the Flame Princess Dragon. Well, what you may not know is a quick tip for dealing with her blue flames. And first of all, this is how the fire works. Lunastra will initially create floating blue dust. And when the dust is struck by a flame, it will ignite to create those blue flames on the ground. 
To deal with the blue flames, you can actually use water moss to puddle pod those flames out of existence. Your hunter notes also say that a bomb or crystal burst will work as well. What you may not know and what your hunter notes don't tell you is that you can actually use a weapon with a water element on it to destroy the blue dust before it ignites into the flames. Alright, now speaking of elemental weapons, let's discuss a special use of weapons with the fire element on it. As I'm sure you may know, when first encountering Kalf Terra, she barely takes notice of your presence. This makes sense when considering we find out after doing enough damage that she's actually covered in a massive thick layer of gold acting as armor. Also, as you may have noticed, is that the gold will begin to glow from heat and take additional damage after she starts to use her hot breath. When the gold cools off, she takes less damage. Well, one thing that you may not know is that a fire elemental weapon can heat up the gold causing it to harden less frequently to increase your team's damage. Now also, just like the torch pot on Lavasia, striking the lava fish with a flame weapon will have the same effect on its skin as well. Alright, for the last one, I'm not 100% sure on the exact parameters to make it work. I mean, I can't even find any information online anywhere about how to make this work exactly, but the thing that you may not know is that by laying down raw meat, you can summon Devil Joe, the world eater. He just can't resist that sweet, sweet meat. In other words, even if Devil Joe isn't currently roaming your environment, or even if he isn't currently on the list of possible monsters on the world map screen, Devil Joe can be added to the environment by laying down a piece of raw meat. And in my experience, the summoning process can take upwards of 30 seconds to activate, but can also be pretty immediate and it will only work in higher rank optional quests, and it seems to have about a 90% success rate, but it should work on any map in any region. And this is my favorite one of him being summoned. He just explodes from under the ground as if he's coming from hell like the devil that he is. Alright guys, that's about it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.